In this tutorial, you will learn how to install the Community Edition of the VTiger Customer Relationship Management System. It's basically a system that enables sales, support, and marketing teams to organize and collaborate to measurably improve customer experiences as well as business outcomes. VTiger CRM also includes email, inventory, project management, and other tools providing a complete business management suite. So to complete this tutorial, you're going to need an Amazon Web Services account. So sign into your Amazon Web Services account, and then I'm then going to show you how to then create the actual Linux Ubuntu instance. So use the search bar at the top of the Amazon uh, Web Services console to search for Amazon Light Cell. Click on the Light Cell search result to open up the Amazon Light Cell uh, dashboard. Click on the Create Instance button, and when the Instance Creation Wizard opens up, scroll down and then click on the OS Only button. Choose the Ubuntu 20.04 uh, image, and then on the Choose Your Instance plan, choose the $10 plan. So um, on the Identify Your Instance uh, input box, you need to set the name for, of the instance to uh, VTiger Server, and then click on the Create Instance button. So this should then uh, deploy a uh, Linux Ubuntu instance within your Lightcell uh, dashboard. So copy the public IP address of the instance and then open up the root 53 service. So um, click on hosted zones and then click on any one hosted zone for any of your registered domain names. Uh, click on create record and then on the record name, you then need to set the name of your server. So in my case, it's going to be vtiger server. And then on the value field, you need to paste in the public IP address for the instance and then click on the create records button. So we've uh, created an A record that maps to the to the Linux Ubuntu instance deployed in the Amazon Lightstyle uh, web app. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to download the default key pay file that actually allows us to connect to this instance via SSH. So once you've actually downloaded it, go to your downloads directory and rename the key pay file to vtigerkey.pin. And then to connect to the instance via SSH, you need to change your working directory to the download directory. And then first, you need to set the key pay file to read only. So run the command sh mode 400 vtigerkey.pim. And then to connect to the instance via SSH, run the command SSHI, append the file name for the key pay file, and then type in Ubuntu at the public IP address for the instance. So you just need to go back to Amazon Light Cell, copy the public IP address for the instance, and then paste that into your terminal window. Then press end. So uh, we should now be uh, connected to the instance uh, successfully. And if you get a fingerprint uh, confirmation prompt, you just need to type in yes and press end. So you can see I've actually successfully connected to the instance via SSH. So the first thing that I'm, I'm actually going to do is I am actually going to set a custom host name. So uh, actually before I do that, let me just download and install some messenger system and package updates. So just run the command apt update and then to set the custom host name, run the command hostname ctl, set hostname and then I'm actually going to set my host name and that's in this case to uh, vtiger server. So just type in vtiger server there and then press end. And then finally, we then need to edit the host configuration file. So just run command uh, nano and then type in etc hosts. And then that should then open up the host configuration file for your Ubuntu server. So in this file, you need to type in uh, 127.0.0.1 or any uh, static IP address that is assigned to any of your interfaces on your server. And then you then need to type in your custom host name. So in my case, it's going to be vtigerserver.mydomainname.com. And then at the end, you just then repeat that to say uh, vtiger server. Press control, press, press control O press enter and then press control X to exit out of the file. And then finally, I'm going to reboot this instance so that all of the changes that I've actually made will take effect. Next, I'm actually then going to install Apache MariaDB as well as the vtiger uh, application files. I'm actually going to download that from uh, SourceForge. So um, reconnect to the instance via SSH. And uh, before we do anything, I'm just going to run the command sudo sudo so that I can be running my commands as the root user. I've actually got a document that I've prepared and you can click in the video description to also get access to this document. So copy and paste that first command to install Apache MariaDB as well as some essential uh, uh, 
Apache and uh, actually there are Apache uh, extensions and PHP extensions as well that you will actually need to complete this tutorial. So once you've uh, executed that command, you then need to check the status of the Apache web server to check and see if it's running. And then next, you then also need to check the status of the MariaDB database engine to also check and see if it's also actually running. So as you can see, the Apache and MariaDB uh, services are actually running. So um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to edit a, uh, a uh, sorry, a MariaDB configuration file and there's a parameter that you need to set in this file. So just copy and paste that command and then below where it says server, they need to paste in that command. So this is a very important command that uh, the vtiger CRM requires in order for it to be able to actually run correctly. So the next thing you then need to do is you then need to go through the MySQL secure installation process. So just complete the secure installation process as you can see. And then finally, you then need to then edit the uh, php. Uh, uh, any uh, configuration file. So in this file, you need to set your memory limit. So I'm just going to search for memory limit here. And then you then need to set, I'm actually just going to set that to one gig. So which is about 1024 uh, megabytes. So just type in 20, 1024 here. And then the next parameter I'm going to configure is the upload max file size. So this actually depend, determines the size of the file that can be uploaded to the, to the server. So you just need to then edit that and you need to change that to 1024M as well. So just remove that too and then set it to 1024. And then the next uh, parameter you need to edit is the uh, log errors uh, parameter. And then you need to set that to off. So I'm just going to search for log uh, errors and then present. And then uh, currently it's actually set to on, so I'm just going to change that to off. So just uh, remove that on parameter and then set that to off actually. Uh, and then I'm then going to look at the max execution time uh, parameter. And then I'm just going to set that to 300 um, uh, seconds. So press Control O, press Enter, and then press Control X to exit out of that uh, file. And then I'm this, just going to restart the Apache uh, service so that all of the changes that we have, we've made will actually take effect. And then next, I'm then going to create a database for the vTiger application. So connect to your MySQL shell or your MariaDB shell. And then just copy and paste those commands one by one to actually then create a database for the vTiger application. So just copy each command so the command I'm actually copying now will actually create a user and also set a password for that user as well. Okay, and then you then need to set your permissions for that user to the v vTiger database. So just copy and paste the command and press enter. And then finally, you then need to flush privileges and then exit out of the MariaDB shell. So let me just copy and paste that command and then I'm then going to then exit out of the MariaDB shell. So once you've actually successfully exited, you now, now need to change your working directory to the uh, www directory. So just copy and paste the command and press enter. And then you then need to run that command to then download the vTiger project from SourceForge. So just copy and paste the command to then uh, download the vTiger web app. So as you can see, I'm actually now actually downloading it. And then once the download is complete, I'm, I'm actually just going to decompress this uh, archive file. So just uh, copy and paste that command to then decompress the vTiger archive file that we've actually just downloaded. So um, after decompressing, the next thing you need to do is you need to change the owner of the 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 vtiger directory to the www data user and then you then need to run the command to enable ssl 
for Apache actually and then um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to then create a, uh, uh, a virtual host configuration file so that Apache knows how to actually load up the vTiger web app so just copy and paste that command to create the virtual host configuration file and then copy and paste that command to then um, so that's that's actually the configuration that Apache needs uh, to be able to load up the vTiger application and then I'm um, then going to tell Apache that of the existence of that configuration file so just copy and paste that command and then you then need to run a config test so I'm just going to run a, an Apache config test just to make sure that what I've actually configured is uh, good so as you can see we've got a syntax uh, okay response here and then finally I'm then going to restart the Apache system service once again so once the service restarts you need to open up your web browser and then go to the uh, vtiger web based uh, dashboard so um, let me just open up a uh, browser window and then type in the URL or the ADA code that you actually set previously on the welcome screen just click on I agree and then click on next on the installation prerequisites window so on the system configuration page set the host name to 127.0.0.1 which is telling the system here that we're just going to be using the local host uh, MariaDB uh, database uh, engine so copy that username and then paste that into the username field and then I'm um, then going to just copy the password as well and then paste that into the password field so just paste that into the password field and then on the database name I'm just going to again copy the name of the database from the installation file that I created and then paste that into the database name field so I now need to set an admin user password so just type in a secure password there you need to make sure you type in a password that, is a, that has an uppercase uh, letter lowercase letter as well as uh, some special characters for security reasons actually if you pass, type in a weak password the vtiger system will actually warn you or notify you that you've actually typed in an insecure password here so i'm just going to type in um, a first name i'm just going to type in a, a last name as well as well as a, an email address so you just need to make sure you type in things that you will remember and that you won't forget so just type in your email address and then you then need to set your time zone and then click on next so i'm just going to click on next again and then i'm just going to set my industry to banking and finance and then click on next so um, as you can see the installation is almost complete so i'm just going to check all of the modules there so just click on select all at the top of the page and then click on next so you need to set your currency, your language, your time zone, as well as your date format. So I'm just going to leave the default there and then click on the get started button. So as you can see, we've now reached the vTiger dashboard. So on the dashboard, you can actually add um, some widgets. So I'm just going to add a widget here for uh, a sales funnel. I'm just going to add another widget for sales pipeline. So this is more of like your dashboard that you actually see the first time you log in. So I recommend that you set widgets that you actually regularly use for the function that you regularly use so that you can just get a quick information right from the point when you actually log in. So as you can see, these are the options and features that the vTiger CRM Community Edition has. And you can work with these to better manage your customer relationship and your customer experiences for your sales support and marketing teams. So that's been it guys, I hope this tutorial has been informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.